All right, welcome to lesson two. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to set up your forms in Webflow and get those working with member stack so that a user can both sign up as well as log in and out. All right, so let's go ahead and set up these forms. So start with the sign up form. Let's go back to member stack. And if you go over to forms and fields, the first thing we want to do is I want to add a few attributes or a few custom fields to accept on the uh, sign up. So for here I have first name and last name um, and then email and password. By default, it's email and password, but I'm going to add uh, the first name, save field, let's add one for last name. And then I'm going to add one called um, Webflow member ID. First off, let's go in here and hide this from the profile. We don't actually want the member to see this, but in a future lesson, we're going to be setting up a member collection in Webflow, and we actually need to store the item ID in member stack in order to do the mark as complete functionality. So we're going to go ahead and add that now, but we won't use it till later. Okay, so to set up your form, let's go back to member stack, and I'm just going to go to the sign up page. And we need to add some custom attributes to the form. So let's go ahead and copy uh, data ms-form and click on the form. Uh, one thing to note, you'll notice that the form wrapper, the form block settings, it has this little form icon. Don't want to add the data attribute to that. You actually want to go in a level um, to the form settings and add the uh, data attribute there. All right, so go down to the custom attributes and click the plus symbol. Let's add the data-ms form in the name and then go back and copy the sign up as the value. Click save. Then we need to add a data attribute for each one of these inputs. So let's go up here, select the data-ms-member and we'll select the first input and its first dash name as the value. And then let's do the same for the last name. last dash name, and then the email. This one's just gonna be email, and then the password. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and publish the site. Uh, so these attributes go live. Uh, that way member stack is able to tell. And let's go back to member stack and test this out. So click on this uh, test sign up page button right here. And first off, we need to add a testing domain. Uh, so go grab the URL. Um, and in this case, it's no code membership demo.webflow.io. Uh, yours is whatever Webflow site you're using. All right, so add the testing domain. Oops, let's uh, remove that extra HTTPS. All right, save and close that. And let's go ahead and test this sign up. Uh, the URL is dash sign or sign dash up. Perfect. Okay, so um, everything should be green except for the Webflow member ID. We're going to be adding that in a future lesson, so you don't need to worry about that failing right now. So let's go ahead and try signing up. So let's go back to the demo site, refresh, say McKinsey child test at test.com, and we'll enter a password. Then the checkout mode will pops up. Uh, this is in test mode, so you don't need to worry about that confirm and pay. Perfect. And if we go back into uh, member stack, let's go to members. And you can see uh, McKinsey child and test that test.com. All right, so the sign up is good to go. So let's take the same process and now do the uh, login page. So let's go back to the forms and fields and login. And let's uh, click on the email. Well, well, first off, let's uh, select the uh, attribute for the form itself. Let's go to the login page and uh, select the form. Again, don't select the form block settings. Instead, do the form settings. Add the custom attribute there and its value of login. Perfect. 
And then uh, this password reset link, what this does is it'll open up a password reset modal to allow somebody to get a new password if they forget it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and then add it to this link down here, paste that in, perfect. All right, now the inputs. Let's uh, select the email, data MS member, and value of email, click save, and data MS member, value of password. Password, perfect. Let's also, while we're in here, add a logout link. So you can go to the navbar tab and select the uh, and then select the logout link. What I'm going to do is copy that and then go into the uh, header. I'm going to duplicate this link and just say uh, logout. And then add that link right here. So it's pound slash ms slash logout. And then we also have the option to hide and show links uh, depending on if a user is signed up. So what we can do is right here, hide sign up links. So maybe we don't want to show the pricing or the sign up link after a user has signed up. So let's go ahead and do data MS content on those two. Data MS content and it's pound members. All right, save that and we'll do the same on sign up. Oops, wrong one. Save that. So for the login link, we're actually going to use this rewrite your login link. Um, so what that does is it changes out the link uh, to go to your members only area, which we're going to set up in a future lesson. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to say call this dashboard and then copy that. Oh, whoops. I'm just going to say change it to dashboard as the value. Click save. Okay, let's go ahead and publish and we should be able to log in and out now. So let's go ahead and test that out. Okay, let's refresh. So now we have the pricing and sign up links hidden because we're logged in. Let's go ahead and click log out. Perfect. And let's try logging in again. So test at test.com and enter the password. Cool. So now we're in and we have access to these episodes. Perfect. Okay, so member stack is basically all set up. Uh, what we're gonna do now is start connecting all the pieces together. So we're gonna set up a collection in Webflow to store our members. And we need to do that because members can have their unique dashboard and also track which uh, lessons that a member signs up for. So we're gonna use Zapier. So when somebody signs up, we're going to send that over to create a CMS item in Webflow. And then that's gonna be sent back to member stack and it's gonna update, if we go back to members, it's gonna update that Webflow member ID field with that ID. All right, so in the next lesson, we're gonna set all that up.